I thank you, Jesus, for everyone who clicks on this video. Holy Spirit, I ask that you speak to me and through me in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Now, yesterday, it came up. Uh, someone commented on my video, but then I actually told them to hit me up on Instagram. I, I usually don't really tell people to hit me up on Instagram, but I deal with this person, you know, uh, because they were basically saying that uh, they know that something is off and they feel as though God is warning them, right? But they don't, uh, they don't hear the audible voice of God or they don't feel like he's talking to them uh, in their spirit, you know what I'm saying, per se. Uh, they, 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 they're doing all the right things on the exterior, right? Like she's like the person, the person was saying like they turned away from sin and things like this. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I knew that it was deeper than, uh, than like the outside things, right? So I actually began to question this person a little more, you know, and just telling them like, okay, have you actually repented for your sins? Because this person just seemed really, really convicted. And I know that that's a, that's a struggle for a lot of people. Like you just feel convicted. You feel like you're not living in your purpose or you feel like something's missing or you feel like something's off you know what i'm saying and a lot of times these feelings that you're having is really actually god speaking to you uh but you know we kind of just put it off as our own feelings and we don't think that it's him but it truly is him you know it truly is god uh this is why you have this 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 feeling in your heart um this feeling to basically come to him like <clears throat> and that's exactly how it was when I was in, in, like, when I was struggling with, with, uh, with being in the world and stuff like that, like, I felt like God was calling me, uh, but I still was doing my own thing, you know what I'm saying? Um, but that was God that was talking to me. Now, it was up to me, and it's just like it's up to you to actually answer the call, you know what I'm saying? To actually answer to God and do what God is, is, is pretty much calling you to do, which is turn away from the world and turn towards him. You know what I'm saying? So as I'm asking this person a question, I'm like, have you repented for your sins? Uh, this person actually told me that they spoke with a quote unquote prophet. And this prophet told them that they, that they were in right standing with God and that God had no issues with them. Now, <clears throat> I ain't tell this person this, but maybe they'll watch this video because I guess they said they watch my videos. When you speak to a prophet, a prophet is a literal spokesperson for God. Okay, like a prophet literally is getting like revelation about you from God. Okay, now the gift of prophecy is foretelling the future, right? But a prophet has the ability, a true prophet of God has the ability to learn things about your heart from God because prophets are really, really, really called to be really, really close to God. And they should be able to really help you in these areas. A lot of people call themselves prophets because they can foresee the future or they have prophetic dreams. But this does not actually make you a prophet. You know what I'm saying? I, I've said this before on my channel. That doesn't make a person a prophet. A lot of people proclaim to be prophets when they really just have certain gifts. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't make them prophets. You know what I'm saying? Prophets are, are very different. Look at prophets in the Bible. They really spoke on sin, you know what I'm saying, and exposed sin to people. That was like the job of a prophet. People really feared prophets. These prophets nowadays are trying to tell you and sell you on things, you know what I'm saying, that 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 may potentially happen, but the true goal is for them to get paid off of you by telling you good things that you want to hear. Now, as I'm questioning her, she begins to tell me that she has jealousy in her heart, she has resentment in her heart, bitterness in her heart, unforgiveness in her heart. She says when she thinks about certain people, uh, her, I think she said her stomach begins to like feel like gut wrenching or some, some along those lines, you know what I'm saying? Like her stomach twirls up. Now I've been there before where I think about a person and like I just automatically get mad, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but I gave her like some tips. I gave her some tips on how she can overcome this, right? Because I know, I know from my own experiences, when I would try to go to God, 
um, one the 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 two key main things that I was lacking was was a was a prayer life and reading the Bible. You know what I'm saying? So I remember being in the world, <clears throat> and then I would kind of like repent, and then maybe like a week or two, where I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna stop doing these sins and stuff like that, and I'm gonna really try to pursue God. And this would last for like a week to a month. Right, but I wouldn't actually read the word of God, and then I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't really pray, and then I would get sucked right back into my old ways. Okay, the only way to transform your mind is to actually develop a relationship with God, and that's by praying and that's by reading the word of God. Right, so if we don't do those two things, then we will never actually build a relationship and we will never actually change the only way to renew your mind is to renew it through your word because through his word i'm sorry because once you begin to read his word your mind will begin to change because <clears throat> you'll see some of the things that he says uh, i mean you'll see the things that he says his, his laws his rules how he speaks and he will begin to speak to you through his word and that was one of her concerns you know, this is something that's actually messing with her faith, she said, because she can't really hear from God. <clears throat> but this whole time, she's feeling like God is warning her and calling her to him. So she actually is hearing from God in a sense. He's communicating with her that it is her time to truly repent and actually seek him. Right. So me just knowing that she's not spending an adequate enough time in, in um, she can't be spending an adequate enough time in her Bible uh, or in prayer. So, you know, I suggested to her that, hey, you know what I'm saying? You take 30 minutes in your day. We all have 30 minutes in our day, right? For God, we should all have that, right? Let's say 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at night, if you want to separate it and you just really struggle with spending a, a lot of time with God. Because we all, we all, you know, at, at, at some point in our walk, so I can't judge nobody. We all got to start somewhere, right? <clears throat> so I told her, like, hey, how about you start reading the word of God for 15 minutes, you know what I'm saying? And then pray for 15 minutes. Do this every single day. I told her to start in James and first john and any one of the gospels i told her the reason i told her james is because i believe every like believer should read james because it pretty much just breaks down how we should be and and rules about our tongue about loving about the heart all of these things right about sin um, and, and what it does and how god feels about it all of these things it's very powerful in the book of james First John is really powerful because it just puts things into perspective. It explains how if you still walk in darkness, then you don't have true fellowship with Christ. Reading these things will enlighten you and it'll encourage you like, OK, if this is what the Bible says, then I really do need to turn away from my sins. And then just reading any of the Gospels is powerful because you get to learn a lot from just reading about how Jesus went about things, what uh, what he said, how he actually added to the laws of moses and things of, of, of this sort and just how spiritual uh the uh the bible is because when you read the gospels it really it really has a very uh big spiritual component to it so i told her i said read those right i'm saying i'm like read at least one chapter out of those three books in the bible a day at least do something like that at least pray for like 15 minutes and then I also told her what I did when I struggled with unforgiveness and, and bitterness and things like this. I quoted Galatians 5, 22, 23, and I quoted Psalms 51 and 10. Now, Psalms 51 and 10, is it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now, by you continuously quoting this scripture and decreeing this thing over yourself, God will begin to actually answer to his word, okay? The Bible says he places his word above his name. So when we actually utilize his word, he respects it. In fact, the Bible says that angels respond to his word. So angels will actually respond to you when you begin to quote the word of God, right? 
And I told her to quote that scripture, creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. I said, you can do this 25 times a day. Do the fruits of the spirit 25 times a day. Galatians 5, 22, 23, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Above, uh, uh, against these, there is no law. Saying this 25 times, getting this into your spirit, right? Getting this into your heart, and then decreeing this over yourself, saying, God, you know, I just, I forgive so-and-so in the name of Jesus. I just decree according to your word that I will operate in the fruits of the spirit. I decree according to your word that I will walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh according to Galatians 5 and 16. Praying these things over yourself, right? And, and, and quoting these scriptures and reading the word of God, I guarantee you will see a change. I guarantee it. There's no way that you can be reading all this this all this all of this light in this life in this book in this holy bible and not be changed from it okay because i can testify and say that this is the reason why i changed because of this king james version bible and because of the amplified bible because i spend you know a, a good amount of time reading the word and and allowing it to digest into my system you know what i'm saying and when you read the word of god i just suggest like really taking your time and going over things, rereading things, like don't think like you're gonna rush. Like I plan on reading this Bible for the rest of my life. So I haven't even really got into like the Old Testament and stuff like that. I'm really focused on the New Testament. But I mean, I'm gonna read this book for the rest of my life. So as I continue to read it, I'm gonna continue to, to grow and continue to learn and continue to like, you know what I'm saying, uh, mature in my thinking, okay? And these are just the things that I told her. You know, if she's struggling with this and I seen another person comment on my thing, uh, comment on my video yesterday and they said that they were a sinner and they said they feel they was like saying some about shame and guilt. And as I'm reading it, I'm just hearing um, um, condemnation. Right. That's condemnation in their mind because they have some reverence of the spirit. They have some reverence of God. So they know that they're not supposed to be doing these uh, these sinful acts and stuff like that. But yet they still are doing these things. Now, I would never judge you, you know what I'm saying, or judge someone like that because we are, at the end of the day, we've all sinned. We've all fallen short, you know what I'm saying? But if, if you are watching this video and you apply some of the things that I've said in this video and you just repent uh, for your sins and you begin to apply these things, you will see a change, right? And something that I really had to do that a lot of people struggle with is I had to cut off my, my old friends. I had to cut off people that, you know, I used to consider my brother and, you know, I used to smoke weed with and, 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 and have these worldly conversations with, play basketball with, you know, people I used to literally train and go hard in the gym with like, you know, basketball, working out, lifting, like people I spent a lot of time with walking before, I, before we even had cars. I had to cut these people off because these people are not on what I'm on, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't just cut them off in an unhealthy way. We had a conversation. You know, I told them, hey, I'm, I'm going this way with God. And, and, and I actually warned them. I told them, hey, you guys should repent as well. And, you know, but I told them, you know, I'm going to distance myself. And eventually, like, I, I, I was praying and I kept hearing that I just actually need to just, like, block everybody and really distance myself. So I followed what the Holy Spirit was telling me and what I felt to do. And I literally blocked these people. You know what I'm saying? And I moved away from them and I really started pursuing God through his word and through prayer. And like I said, starting with 30 minutes a day, 15 minutes in the word, 15 minutes in prayer is so powerful because God can actually build on that where you'll start spending an hour, two hours, you know what I'm saying? And then you're fasting and doing things like that. You know what I'm saying? But I would more so focus on just like my prayer life and things like that. And then fasting when you feel led. Like I told the girl as well, because she was discouraged about not hearing from God, I told her that he actually is communicating with you. Uh, she said that a lot of my videos have been like hitting home for her, basically like they've been relatively close to the things that she's uh, uh, struggling with or asking God for or whatever, um, you know, and that is a form of how he can speak to you as well through videos. You know, a lot of I've seen a lot of people say that he speaks to them through like music and worship and stuff like that. I, I don't listen to a lot of praise and worship uh people because it's just it just seems like a lot of people are are, are wicked and, and and um 
you know, I'm, I ain't even finna get into all that. You know, I listen to instrumentals and I pray over over instrumentals. I listen to William Augusto, you know what I'm saying, and stuff like that. Sometimes Cal love it. Uh, you know, so I, I listen to instrumentals a lot. Um, uh, I'm gonna just throw this out there. I do listen to a, a one, uh, two Christian rappers every once in a while, like uh, Hovey and Khalid Gordon. I listen to those two every once in a while because, hey, I mean, I used to listen to rap. So I used to love Roddy Rich. So like, uh, I'm like, man, I need somebody to listen to. Khalid Gordon kind of like the closest thing I could get to Roddy Rich. So, you know, I listen to him uh, and stuff like that. But he got some powerful messages in his songs as well. I like I like the stuff that he raps about too, and, and it just it just slap it go hard. I ain't gonna lie. But the thing I told her as well is that God will really speak to you when you begin to read His Word. You know, it'll be times that I'm in prayer and then I'm reminded of a scripture. You know what I'm saying? And then God is like, you know, this scripture relates to this that you're going through. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm reminded of a scripture and He's like, quote this scripture. Currently, right now, you know, I quote Luke 10 and 19 uh, in the morning time, 100 times. And then I quote some other scriptures before I go to bed. Um, Isaiah 11 and 2 and some other scriptures. Uh, Isaiah 11 and 2 is a scripture on wisdom. And I quote this scripture because I really want to acquire the spirit of wisdom. I want to uh, be as wise as I can. So this is something that I've transitioned to. But I, but when I struggle with unforgiveness, I and also just sin in general, I quoted Psalms 51 and 10 in Galatians 5, 22, 23, because it says to create in me a clean heart. So when even when I have lustful thoughts, I quote Psalm 51 and 10, right? If, if a lustful thought pops in my mind, I'm like, Lord, I cast this, this thought down right now. Lord, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me, because whatsoever a man thinketh, that is where his heart is. And that is what the Bible says as well. So you really have to uh, guard your thoughts. And guard the things that you say, guard the things that you watch, you know what I'm saying? Some more tips uh, is like, I, I used to watch AMP, uh, their famous, you know what I'm saying, uh, YouTube group, Kai Sinat, I used to watch him, you know, but I really, really, I don't watch him now at all. Sometimes, I, you know, I won't lie, sometimes I'll see a, a, a clip, it'll be like 10 minutes, or a few minutes, or even a YouTube short, and I may watch it, and it's Kai Sinat, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm not just uh, um, engulfing myself in their content, engulfing myself in worldly content. You know, I really don't watch a lot of YouTubers like that. I actually watch a lot of things on finance and I watch Kevin L.A. Ewan. So those are like the, the type of things that I, I enjoy. I really enjoy learning about finances and stuff like that. And, and, that, and that's something that I have a, you know, some that I have a hobby in as well. Or not really a hobby, just something that I'm working on, I guess you could say. So, you know, Hopefully this video was a help and a blessing to many of you. You know, I understand the struggle. So I just I just pray right now, Lord, that you strengthen these people. Uh, your word says in Isaiah 41 and 10 to fear thou not for I'm with thee. Be not dismayed for I'm thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will pull thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Holy Spirit, I ask that you uphold these people with the right hand of your righteousness, that you strengthen these people. I bind the spirit of fear off of these people. I bind the spirit of condemnation. I decree, Father God, that no condemnation shall enter into the hearts and the minds of these people. Your word says that there is no condemnation for the righteous. So, Father God, I just ask that these people be made righteous, that they seek righteousness, that they seek the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And I just hope that this video was an encouragement and a blessing for who it was intended for.